In a world where software is ubiquitous and its impact is profound, the importance of efficiency extends beyond just the boundaries of the business. Efficient software is not only good for businesses, but it is also good for the planet. By making computational efficiency a core objective and empowering professionals with the right tools to achieve it, we are not only driving toward more profitable business outcomes, but we are also fostering a more responsible and sustainable future. Driven by our focus on optimizing computational efficiency, resulting in measurable cost savings and a reduction in the carbon footprint for our customers, Elastic Observability charts new frontiers in sustainable software engineering with Elastic Universal Profiling. Elastic Universal Profiling is a whole system, always on, continuous profiling solution that eliminates the need for code instrumentation, recompilation, on-host debug symbols, or service restarts. Leveraging eBPF, Universal Profiling operates within the Linux kernel space, capturing only the needed data with minimal overhead in an unobtrusive manner. It profiles every line of code running on the machine, including not only your application code, but kernel code and third-party libraries, thereby providing you deep, whole system code visibility across your entire fleet so you can eliminate the guesswork. Today, I'm going to demonstrate the universal profiling solution to you. So let's have a quick look at universal profiling. Over here, I've got universal profiling up and running in my Elastic environment. And ultimately, what it's going to show me is it's going to show me where I have slow deployments of code. So looking at this stack trace overview, we can see the most expensive deployments that we have running right now. In simplified terms, the way the profiler works is that it asks the CPU 20 times a second what things it's currently working on. The profiler then collects these samples as well as a stack trace for each. The more often we see a certain task when we ask the CPU what it's doing, the more CPU intensive it therefore is. Looking at our data here, we can see that the interest rate calculator service is by far the most expensive application that we currently have running. That's interesting since all it's supposed to do is calculate a bunch of interest for us. Now, when interpreting profiling data, it can often be helpful to know at least a little bit about the underlying application. So let's have a quick look at our application. All it really does is it's taking a muffling interest rate as an environment variable and then exposing an endpoint where we can calculate the interest rate or the interest someone gets if they invested their money for that number of months. So now we've had a little look at the application. Let's try to find out why it's taking up so much CPU time. In order to generate a hypothesis, what I recommend is we hit the functions functionality over here, which will tell us what uh, functions are running here that are taking up the most CPU time. Now, a lot of the times you're gonna see things that are pretty obvious, like uh, you know the route to the flask uh, interest rate calculation. Uh, ultimately, this is a Python Flask app and it has an interest service. So that's going to be where almost all of our code is, is essentially running at a top level. Uh, so that's probably not where we're likely to find the problem. But down here, we can see this Python get item thing here. And I'm wondering whether there is a problem here. We can see it's taking up nearly 30% of the CPU time. So let's have a little look and drill down into what's happening here. Now this is a flame graph, which is quite a, an interesting view on our data. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly zoom in a little bit so we can see exactly what's going on with that method and make it a little bit more obvious here. So what we can see here is in fact, we're, we're looking at a hierarchical view 
of the most frequently executed code paths in our program. The top bar, also known as the root, represents 100% of the CPU time. As we move down the graph, we can actually see functions or methods that are being called and how much time they are taking. With this information, we can identify hotspots in our code and optimize them for better performance. So let's take a, a closer look at this, right? So in this view, we can see our, our function names here. We can see that get item function we saw that was a, a, a function that came up in our top functions list. So definitely this looks quite interesting. And if we actually have a look at uh, this get item method, we can actually, you know, Google for that. We can go in. We can see that it has something to do with processing environment variables, right? So this is quite interesting. So if we go and have a little look at the code that's running here, we can also see that we're doing uh, an environment variable get in a loop. So we're actually hitting the environment and getting environment variables on a fairly regular basis which is probably not the most efficient thing to do. We should probably only get this once and not get it in a loop as we are doing so in here. And actually, you know, this is costing us a lot of money. I mean, in an annualized, uh, annualized dollar costs there, we're talking like $15. And if we scaled that up over uh, a few different uh, services, you know, as we probably do, because this is only one instance. So if we had like, you know, 10 instances running, this actually gets pretty, pretty expensive, right? 10 times that is like $150. And uh, that's a lot of money to spend on just uh, getting environment variables. And not only that, but it also will tell us if we click here, a little bit more information, it will tell us all about how much CO2 we're using as well. So like how much CO2 are we emitting into the atmosphere uh, by just getting environment variables? It's obviously not uh, a great way to, uh, to pollute the planet. So we can quickly change this. We can actually move uh, this interest rate calculation out of the loop. And let's take a look and see if this actually made a difference. So if we go over here back to the, uh, the top N functions, what we'll do is, is we'll compare our current deployment to our new optimized service that we've just uh, deployed. So let's put that in there. We can compare the original code, which is running as part of the interest rate calculator service, to the new code, which is running as the interest rate calculator optimized service. And indeed, we've managed to gain 60% better performance just by making that simple code change. And if you remember, we were able to find that out by drilling down through the universal profiling tool. We, we found out that uh, the interest rate calculator service was, was definitely one of the busiest deployments that we had in terms of CPU time. We looked at the top N functions to generate a hypothesis about which uh, functions might be causing uh, the problem there. And then we drilled down into the flame graph that showed us that indeed there was a significant amount of CPU time being spent in that function. So now you can see, you know, ultimately, if you look down here through the list, the original deployment has that uh, get item method in here, and the new deployment, it's uh, it's virtually nowhere to be seen. So we, we've definitely optimized that particular function call uh, in a way that it's no longer impacting our, uh, our performance. And so that's the power of universal profiling. It can really help you get better performance applications, reduce environmental impact, and improve the cost associated with your services, which, as we know, is uh, very important when you're trying to run efficient operations. Thank you very much, everybody.